Hey guys, um, I wanted to pick up where I left off with my last video on that two column layout. Um, so if you remember, I had this video here, or this website here, uh, I know the menu is a little different, um, I was just messing around with some things, but I wanted to take a moment to show you what can be achieved if you uh, use a little Photoshop and just slice up some things and just use them in particular areas. So with this image, or I'm going to jump right into Photoshop, I have a three layers set up. I have a lighter or a mid gray to darker gray here as my background. Layer one is the same thing, like a little bit lighter on the bottom and darker on the top. And then what I'm going to use for my individual headers or my H1 tags is this very, very light color to darker color. And uh, I recorded what the colors were. So let's say I grab this one down here, Pantone 4, uh, 446C, so it's coded. Um, but if I go over to Picker, I can get my hexadecimal numbers here, and I recorded all of those. So that way I can seamlessly run this background image into a background color. So with that said, I'm going to slice up this image. I'm just going to come here and create a couple slices. La la la. So do something like this. And because they're all going to be tiled, I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to grab my Slice Select tool. Because they're all going to be tiled, I'm just going to set them to one pixel wide. And for some reason, I'm having issues with things being the, the right size today. Uh, grab this one, and I'll give it a height of 50. Zoom in and bump that down a little bit. Actually, I lied. I'm going to go 48 because that I don't trust the way that that looks. All right. So now with all those, I'm going to go File, Save for Web and Devices, and I'm just going to optimize these for the web. And uh, having these one pixel wide slivers is what I what I call them, or um, yeah, I'll call them slivers. Anyways. Um, the uh, browser doesn't have to go out and get another image or a larger image. It can just re uh, reuse that image and tile it. It makes your website so much quicker. So with that said, I'm going to zoom in and grab these here. Actually, I forgot to give them names. So this one I'm going to do page background. Give this one a background of H1 BG. And this one I will just call container BG. Okay, with all those named, I'm going to hold down Shift and try and click on the slices that I know. There we go. Click on the slices that I wanted. I'm doing this on my second screen. Wow. Anyways, um, I double clicked on these and <laughs> I, uh, I renamed them. And then I, I held down shift, so double click on it, rename that image, click OK. Um, and then hold down shift and just click on those slices, and that'll select them. And with those selected, I'm just going to do a PNG uh, image. PNG, I found, usually creates the smallest image size, and I think my other video is going to stop rendering before I finish this one, but that's OK. So with those selected, I'm going to hit save. I have to do this on my other screen because you can't see the save button and I can't click it. So inside my Wally X3 folder, inside of images, and because I have multiple slices, it's going to create the images folder or put them into it if it's already created. So in this instance, it's going to put it in there. So I'm going to hit save. Now if I pull up that Wally X3 and look at images, I have all of those files that I just created. Now jumping back into Eclipse, I want to style this H1 tag. So I'm going to do URL and I'm going to replace that background color. Um, URL inside quotes, I'm going to do dot slash images slash H1 underscore BG dot PNG repeat on the X axis, top left alignment. So if I save that, jump back out here and refresh, you'll see that that color changed a little bit. So now we have a slight gradient there, 
And I'm actually going to adjust this instead of top left. I'm going to do center left to see if that makes any difference, which it should. So that shifts it up a little bit. Probably not very noticeable, but that's okay. Um, now I'm going to do the background on my body. So I'm going to grab this, do the same thing, URL dot slash images page bg dot png. We'll do a repeat on the x-axis, we'll top left, and we'll give it a background color while we're at it of 3E4545. And what this will do is where this image stops, it'll seamlessly blend that bottom color in with this. So now if I come back out to Chrome, okay, that's an epic fail right there. Um, did I even grab the right image? Uh, let's see. Okay, what I have to do is I have to adjust my slices, and for some reason I cannot tell why my uh, version of Photoshop is throwing off my slices. So I'll do the same thing here, 345, and I'll nudge them down a little bit. So now I gotta resave these. I'm just gonna do a quick keyboard shortcut. Come over here and select my other slice. There we go. And I'm just gonna hit save. And it should just save over my two slices and replace it. So now if I come back over to, there we go, that looks a little bit better. So, now that you see that that's working correctly, um, nice seamless blend there. The last piece is this container item here, which I'm going to stylize with that, that other image that I created. So URL, images, container, underscore bg dot png, repeat x top left to for alignment and I'm going to use the color that I grabbed before I left Photoshop. So I'll save that and refresh and as you can see by using a little bit of Photoshop um, just pieces of gradients you can actually stylize uh, any layout that you want pretty quickly. So and it, it actually makes it a lot quicker when you're um, loading the the uh, the website into a browser as well, because people aren't going out and getting huge chunks of files; they're just getting small, tiny pieces. Um, this is how I try and build all my websites, so that way they're super quick, they're super lightweight, um, they don't have the overhead. And if you if you have large images, like let's say you're a photographer or something like that, you don't want to have the added weight of all those extra, all those graphic layout uh, images that you're going to be using, you want to have those high quality images that are going to take a while to load. So you don't want to have to have your user wait for that large image to load, and then also all the individual images for your layout. Um, that's just one of my suggestions, um, and then you can see it makes quite a big difference. Um, and one last thing I'm going to do before I go is do these menu items. So you can see that you can actually reuse the graphics and because it's already loaded in your browser will recognize that it doesn't have to reload it and it makes it a lot quicker. URL uh, dot slash images h1 bg dot png repeat x top left and we'll save it and because I'm not assigning a background color to this I don't think it'll actually ever uh, ever get above or, or longer than this. So um, now I've styled that. It looks a little more consistent. I don't have super white coloring aside from down here. But um, yeah, so uh, hopefully you found this video a little bit more helpful and you kind of clarified what the other video might have uh, might have been a little muddy. Um, so uh, let me know what you think of this and hopefully, like I said, you found this useful. And I do want to do a couple of graphic layout uh, tutorials down the road and actually com fully converting them into uh, HTML and CSS. But I'll, I'll catch you guys later.